Hey guys, today we're going to be working on the seat cushion for this antique Stickley Brothers rocking chair. It's actually a special chair. It's a Stickley Brothers 790 and we're going to redo the leather cushion for the seat. And what's unique about this is it has a round back on the cushion and so we can't use our traditional method of piping along the sides. And so we'll show you a substitute and the best way to put leather upholstery on this type of cushion. So this will be the round back cushion for the Stickley chair. Stick around. Okay, so we've got our seat frame built. We made a hardwood frame out of ash, and it's just built with half lap joints. It's got jute webbing on the top in this case. And so we use this to draw out our template for the top panel in leather. Just stay a half inch beyond your line, and then leave a little extra at the front for where the cushion waterfalls down over. So we'll finish cutting out that template and then it'll be time to cut out some leather panels and then on to the sewing room. All right, the first two layers of foam are going to be 2535 foam. It's kind of a medium density and a medium firmness. So just take your wooden frame, hang it about an inch over one edge of the, of the uh, foam and go ahead and trace it out so we can cut that to size. All right, and then I'd like a couple layers of soft stuff up on top of the seat cushion. So we'll do two one inch layers of 1818 foam. Now normally that would be reserved for backrest foam, but what I've found is that if you start with a denser, firmer layer, and then on top of that, you go with very soft foam glued together, it winds up with a really comfortable base for your rocking chair. So we'll be using this purple stuff. Two layers of this, one layer flat, and the next layer will waterfall over, make a nice bullnose front edge. Okay, then just a little more spray adhesive and we'll get some batting strips in place. This first one will just be to add a little extra loft and a little bit of crown to the top of the cushion. And then everything else will just be standard one layer.
Okay, well, if any of you guys are into upholstery or leather work, uh, this is the time that you wait for when you get to roll out a nice big hide. Grab your template that we made earlier, and you can start laying out a good spot for that big top seat panel that we'll need for this project. It's got the rounded edge in the back. We've accounted for the half inch seam allowance on the sides, and we have a little extra on the front for our pull under. So we'll lay that out in a little more detail and get the big scissors out. So I've got one long continuous length of boxing for this cushion and what I'm going to do is leave it a little bit long, start at one end, it's already radiused over, and I'm just going to staple the panels together and by the time I get to the other end, why then I'll have a better idea of exactly how long that needs to be. So we'll just staple these panels together and then it'll be time for sewing. Every inch or two, put a 3 8 inch staple in with a plier nose stapler and just helps align your panels. One less thing to do when you're sewing. Okay, so now that we have our boxing strip stapled up with our seat panel, we can go ahead and sew the pieces together. This is just a blind seam with a half inch seam allowance. So hold your threads back, get your stitch started, and we'll back tack a little bit. And then we'll be on our way down the seam. Pretty basic as far as sewing goes. We've already set our tension in a scrap of this same leather and uh, confirmed that we don't have any loose stitches on the underside. Tension's all set, correct needle, and off we go.
So we're getting ready to top stitch the seam. We just have to pull these temporary staples first all the way down our long seam and then we'll increase the stitch length a little bit on the sewing machine for a nice decorative top stitch. Okay, so we'll go ahead and top stitch down this long seam. Just turn your, turn your seam allowance towards the boxing side and with a fairly long stitch length go ahead and hold your threads back and we'll sew that top stitch. Okay, so the net result of top stitching is an effect that's similar to a small piping, although it's empty, there's no cording in there. Uh, it's just a decorative top stitch that actually helps to reinforce the corner as well. Makes for a nice strong cushion. Okay, so we're getting ready to install the cover here and you definitely want to give yourself reference marks on the bottom of your wood frame. I like to have one about one inch in from the edge of the wood and this just gives you a convenient line to pull to when you're stretching the cushion. Okay, so once the seams are sewn, you can get a pretty good idea of how the cover is going to fit down over the cushion that we built. And the nice thing about a sewn cover is a lot of the slack is taken out just from a rough fitting. So. We'll get the staple gun out and start installing this, but already I've got a pretty good feeling that this will stretch down all right for us. At the front, we've got a center notch in the leather and also a center reference mark on the wood frame. So we'll start there and just get the cover roughly centered. A couple of 3 8 inch staples there. And then we'll go to the back of the cushion now it's a little harder to get a center reference mark here just because of the continuous boxing, but what I'll do is just angle a staple so that it can be easily removed if we have to reposition that as we go. Again, we're just looking to roughly pull to our one inch reference lines on the side of the cushion here. And just a few staples to get us going on each side. And then we'll flip it over and get a rough gauge of how well this cover is going to fit for us. So now obviously we're not stapled down along the front and back, just right at the center of each side, but we're already starting to pull down. We don't have a tremendous amount of slack at the corners. Uh, the top sewn stitch gives us a little bit of, it's almost like a piping and it gives it some structure to the seam. So I like the look of that. I think we're going in the right direction and we'll carry on with it. I'm going to go back to the front and we'll work down stapling, staying just a couple inches out of the corner because I like to button up the sides before I finish with the front. So we'll move on to that. Just kind of sighting down the front and making sure that we like the reveal. We're not producing too many wrinkles there as we work out towards a corner. I 
I've got a pretty good vantage here just looking down the side. And I like that, so I'm going to take it. And again, I'll stay two, three inches out of that corner so we can button down the side first. And we'll do the same thing, working back to this corner at the front. Then we'll go to the back. Now, this is a tricky part, of course, because we've got this radius on the back of the cushion. There's quite a curve to it. And because of that, we know we're gonna have little micro pleats on the underside of the cushion. Well, that's okay, as long as we can minimize the amount of wrinkles that we show on the back side. And even a lot of that will be covered, but we want it as tidy looking as possible. So we'll just keep working it around, scooch up into the corner where you need to. Realize you're gonna make those micro pleats. That's not a big deal. And again, I'm looking to stay two or three inches out of the corner. We'll give this one a go. And I'm not developing too many wrinkles on the visible side. So I'm happy with that, I'll keep it. I can maybe get one more staple in before we move on to the sides. So let's do that. Let's have one more look at it from the top side. We still need to draw out a lot of this tension on the side, which we haven't worked yet. But the front is starting to come around. It's starting to look like a cushion. On the back, we're getting there. We're getting there. So let's look at one of these sides, and sometimes without staples, I like to just scooch the corner into position, pull it close to where I'm going to be, and kind of imagine how that's going to fold down. Now don't worry if you get some puckers down here, this will all be below the level of the seat frame, and so that won't be visible. I think we're close. We have a little bit of extra material here, but if we manage it incrementally, working towards the corner, I think we can get there. See, now you pull just a little too far, and you'll get a, a big wrinkle developing there. It's not the end of the world, but you want it as tidy as possible. Sometimes it's just learning how aggressive you can be with the stretching. And this one we can take all the way into the corner because we're going to fold that over and finish out this corner. You might even be able to handle a project like this with a home sewing machine if it was a heavy duty one or a portable walking foot like a Sailrite might be up to the task. So it's a fun project to try. Okay, let's work the side towards the front edge of the cushion again. See how we can get this one to come out. It's nice to have everything just the size you need it from a sewn cushion. It's a different story when you're trying to stretch leather to fit the cushion in like a no sew, no pleat type of scenario. And it's a little bit, a little bit more work to stretch the leather to make it fit. This one, the sewing, really helps you out and starts to form the shape of the the cover for you. And the final part is just to pull that front over again and see if you can get that nice smooth waterfall or bullnose effect, and just button that down. Okay, then work in the back corner. Again, these are a little trickier because we do have uh, the rounded shape to deal with. But it's not too bad if you take it piece by piece. 
Again, we're not worried if we have micro pleats on the underside here, we can manage those. And actually the little notch on the wood frame is a good place to work excess slack to because all of this will be below uh, the vision just because of the frame of the chair. And so we'll see if we can work that side boxing out to match. Make sure we're not generating too many wrinkles on the side there. And work our way back. Sighting right down over the cushion is a good vantage to have because you'll notice if it's a good line or if you have wrinkles that you don't like. Okay, it looks like our cover was just snug enough. I think we'll make it around on that one. So we'll work on the other side and then button this up with a dust cover. guys well thanks for watching the step-by-step -step process on how to reupholster your antique rocking chair in leather we got you through the foam the batting and the leather cover with even some sewing so hope some of that info was helpful for you we'll catch you next time thanks for watching